also have a good presence there. Uh, there are uh, companies who have been doing, uh, Air India has opened an office there for finance lease of the A350 aircraft. Uh, the next question is, what about the operating lease and uh, role of the banks in financing the aircraft assets? Uh, from Gift City and uh, what's their view and what are their concerns? Why it has not happened? And uh, what's the way forward? The uh, second thing is that uh, the banks need to collaborate with the law firms as well as the asset <coughs> management company to have the comfort on the management of the aircraft on reposition or release and uh, contracts and everything. I open the floor to Mr. Ashok Sharma and uh, let him do the uh, uh, put his views on what's the way forward. Uh, thanks, Samitji, and good morning, friends. We little after good morning. Uh, let me give a background before we come to this. So uh, I will raise questions myself and give the answers as well. What is the country's ability to meet the needs of industry in the aviation? How far we have reached now? Are we competitive in terms of the pricing? The RBI uh, aggregates the data relating to what we call the All India Scheduled Commercial Banks. So I was looking at this data 2010. The total trade outstanding for the banking industry was 30 lakh crore. 2024, it is almost 165 lakh crore. And if I add the NBFC number, it touches 200 lakh crore. So we are there. Second part, are we competitive? So I was told that aviation industry typically requires funding for 12 years, 15 years. As a banker, one thing we understand that if revenues are in rupee, the funding in rupee would be most competitive, whatever arithmetic we apply. So can we fund aircrafts in rupee or should we continue to fund in dollars? That is the question. I were talking to a couple of overseas friends. So if we compare, let us say, a 12 year, 15 year funding in dollar versus 12 year, 15 year funding in rupee, how does it look like? So, so far, maybe around 5% you pick it up, then maybe you put the margin around 2%, 3%, depending upon which airline it is. So you choose a simple number of 2%, 7%. If you do 12 year hedging, maybe at least 7% you will end up paying whatever options, forwards, instruments you use. So the effective cost is in excess of 10%. Come to the rupee side. The rupee side 12 year loan, you go to any industry, nobody pays in excess of 10%, any large industry. So that means rupee funding, if we can make it work, is most profitable. Number three point, whether the banks, one thing I shared with you, the size of the total uh, Indian banking trade industry. What are the projects banks doing now? How do they compare with the requirements in the aviation? So I was looking at the cost per aircraft. I think A321, I was just Googling, 120 million. I multiplied this by 8.3, so 996 crore. Let us, for the simplicity, 1000 crore per aircraft. We have funded a uh, recent past one refinery, 72,000 crore. We have funded one road in the recent past, 1 lakh crore. We have funded another road in the recent past, 56,000 crore. Funding of 10,000 crore in excess is very normal. So the capability of the Indian banks to extend this kind of funding is not abnormal. Now, why it has not happened? I am um, taking the liberty of Amiji you know, yeah. to add questions and so that <laughs> yeah, there, there is a flow in the, in the discussion yeah, yeah, part. Of course, sir. Yeah. One thing is that we as a bank have not understood how to handle the asset. So uh, this business requires the ability to understand the asset and handle the asset. Our regulator has been a little reluctant in uh, the banks 
owning the assets banks are not supposed to own the assets so operating lease versus financial lease how do we go about it uh, we as a bank are fine with the financial lease structure but lot of things needs to be sorted out at a regulatory level so that the banking regulation act and all those kind of things needs to be sorted out so that banks have a clear cut uh, approvals for doing this business some gray areas remain some banks have tried out but if we were to scale it up then a uh, uh, lot more clarity on these things would be needed so of uh, this round i will submit submit up now that ability wise indian banking system has the ability money is not a issue pricing is not a issue if the entire ecosystem of regulation etc etc is taken care of i think we are ready to take off i think i end stop it here now and then we we'll take it for the yeah, one of the pertinent questions which uh, always comes to a lessor or a person uh, who is looking for financing is what is the cost of the capital now india being a triple b minus uh, rated uh, sovereign uh, country and obviously i have been with bank of baroda as well that i have seen that the credit rating of the country affects the cost of capital uh, when the foreign uh, leasing company go to a foreign bank let's say in new york or london or hong kong or singapore their cost of capital is less than what they get in india so how do we address that issue because if aviation leasing aircraft asset financing has to be taken off from gift city uh, the cost of capital impacts the price of leasing structure and indian airlines operators in india are used to a certain lease rate factor uh, when they are borrowing uh, getting the aircraft and lease from foreign entities so this gap of uh, cost of capital how do we address that uh, uh, is there any mechanism which can be worked out uh, to address this issue see uh, we uh, have been discussing these issues with a couple of uh, banks who are active in this uh, business so as i was mentioning earlier everything boils down to that why don't we give the money in rupees nothing prohibits us nothing prohibits the industry accepting the cost of capital issue in dollars would remain it's not going to go away but is it material suppose uh, a airline in brazil or in china is borrowing the money and rather as compared to the uh, indian uh, aviation indian airline borrowing the money in the overseas market the difference is roughly 100 basis point or so manageable i would not say unmanageable but again my my answer is that rather than trying to manage the cost of capital see nobody is going to subsidize that doesn't work maybe you go to government look for some incentives it can be a temporary phenomenon it cannot be supportive of the kind of aspirations the country has so we have to work out a solution which is bankable and which does not put any uh, any burden on any of the government author authorities so to my mind uh, one is the rupee part and another is the uh, mix of both rupees some part can be in dollar some part can be rupees so those kind of structures would evolve and they to my mind are workable yeah but uh, if it is to be in rupee then it has to be outside gift city because gift city only allows foreign currency so i think it stops us in changing the model of gift city as well so uh, see when we look for solutions what it works so uh, uh, when you have a, a shop if there is a, a grahak who calls for some other item then you suddenly get that item in the shop is it not so uh, we have to look at all the possibilities that what is what gives me the optimum solution uh, the other area is that uh, the surface act and uh, all these regulations need to take care of uh, the comfort of the banks to put a charge on the aircraft assets the service act does not allow that and uh, of course the appetite is not a problem as you told and uh, uh, the uh, business is also not a problem it's only about comfort of the bank on doing a first uh, transaction on a aircraft asset finance uh, rather than doing a balance sheet financing which has been already been done in the industry it's not about now about the time to do asset finance so from the legal fraternity point of view from the regulatory point of view do you think some changes need to be done to give comfort to the banks and nbfcs to come into this and uh, one is the cape town convention of course and ratified by the parliament and uh, how do we go about it and uh, 
are there any other things which need to be added uh, for the banks to be comfortable on this? Good afternoon, everyone. So, yeah, I think um, as you mentioned, Sarpezi, I'll just give a brief background to everyone sitting here. That Sarpezi is a law which permits the lenders to recover the money. Now, there's an exemption in relation to aircrafts that you cannot possess the aircrafts without court's intervention. Whereas, under Sarpezi, you can repossess other aircraft, or other assets without court's intervention. For example, cars, right? So, but yes, I think this, this has been a challenge in addition to other challenges which Sir has uh, just highlighted for the banks. But I think this, this is not going to be a major challenge once Cape Town Convention Act is implemented completely. Now, we ratified the Cape Town Convention in 2008. The bill has been in the annual since 2022 now. Uh, and what, what we are expecting that now uh, after the elections, uh, it's, it's not going to take too much time now to implement it to implement it completely as a law because the bill has already been placed in the parliament. Now it's just we are waiting for the final assent of the you know, parliament. Probably that may not take much time. And another reason for lessers right now to you know, say slightly uh, behind and you know, not come actively or say set up in Gibsity. See, the trust, uh, the trust deficit has always been there due to the precedents. Like uh, we had Kingfisher in the past, but we had uh, Go First, which is the you know recent fiasco which we have seen. But nevertheless, uh, several steps have been undertaken to iron out these issues. For example, uh, there was a notification issued in October 2023, which clearly said that the you know aircrafts, the uh, aviation assets, will not be a part of the moratorium under the insolvency code. And followed by that, keeping that in mind and keeping other aspects in mind, the Delhi High Court and Go Air has permitted you know, repossessions. So I think this trust deficit will now decrease to an extent because uh, the primary concerns so far have had been for repossessions with the lessors, right? That has been slightly taken care of. Once the Cape Town Convention is completely implemented, I think the surfacing issue will also be taken care of because the Cape Town Convention will, uh, in a way, you know, supersede the, the existing these things. Also, uh, another factor which uh, you know the lessors are still considering that the question is that why not Indian banks are still doing you know financing. So as so I said, once that starts happening, probably yes, that will be another factor for the lessors that you know they will have more you know trust in the Indian market. And they may then, you know, start exploring, say, setting up actively in the Gibb City, and you know, do do more leasing into India. Um, uh, one of the products which uh, normally the foreign lessors work in conjunction with the banks abroad is ABS asset-based securitization, raising cap from capital market. And on the airline side, there is NS Equipment Trust Certificate (EEC). If we talk about India. The credit worthy airlines, as of now, we can say is Indigo because it is a profit making airline. If we talk about as an EETC, as a mechanism of financing the aircraft in conjunction with the bank make SBI. But that is some time uh, far away, kind of. Uh, but do you think uh, ABS can be brought into India and that can be workable with the Indian bank in a, as a way to give some mezzanine financing? mechanism to a bank uh, to give them a uh, structure for financing? I think uh, given the scenario, uh, uh, I think we'll move step by step. So let's first focus on the plain Manila finances. Once that is achieved, so I think yes, on the next steps we can look at ABS or you know EDCs and things like that. Okay. And there could be one scenario, uh, Mr. Sharma, that uh, Indian bank can uh, tie up with foreign banks who have already been into Aviation banking, aircraft financing. Uh, do you think what's the synergy there? What's the way it can be done? Certainly, that is the right thought. Normally, whenever you start doing a new activity, new business, you try to learn from the existing players who already have experience. So, tying up with the existing players who are already good at it is a good idea. In fact, we keep talking to many such players to understand from them, and all those things are on cards, I would say. Okay, so there is a scope for foreign bank to collaborate with the Indian bank and yes. mechanism can be worked out. Uh, 
governance structure of the partnership and uh, how they partner. One part is the uh, domain knowledge, but other part is the financial uh, participation by the fund. So those two parts are to be taken care of. So both, both, I think yeah. the knowledge plays an important role. And yeah. uh, once you share a knowledge, unless you put the money for this knowledge, the knowledge is not complete. So whenever someone says this is right, that means uh, they partner us uh, in terms of the share of the funding as well. So that is how the banking works. So giving idea is very easy. But uh, when the two partners are uh, giving ideas to each other, if they put the money also with the idea, then the partnership is good. Yes, of course. So that is how the normal all the partnerships work. Yes, uh, because uh, uh, one of the ways could be uh, since I was with Bank of Baroda, my experience has been, has been that if a subsidiary or a separate division is set up within the bank, wherein there is people from the industry and people from the bank, of course the signing on the due diligence and the credit line has to be done by the banker. And the domain knowledge and the...